Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a little bit of a casual style video. Uh, I'm going to start it today, but it's probably going to go throughout the next several days or week or so um, because a lot of you have asked to see a little bit more around Montreal and we're getting nicer weather now. It is getting into actual spring weather now that we're at the end of April. So I think it's going to be a little bit easier to record some stuff. I'm not going to get up to anything terribly exciting. It's not going to be like a travel vlog type of excitement, but I'm going to record out and about doing some stuff around Montreal, seeing some stuff, and just kind of give you an idea of the vibe. And also throughout this video, I think I'm going to answer some of the first questions that you guys have asked me. It's definitely not going to be an extensive Q&A all about Montreal or anything like that. And it's not even going to be 100% about Montreal because I have gotten some other questions about New York or about Paris before that. I am about to head out the door to a cafe. I'm going to get a little bit of work done. I haven't decided yet if I want to write or if I want to edit a video that I've already recorded or something else entirely. I have some random admin sort of things that I need to get done. So I just thought it would be nice to get out a little bit and get out of the apartment. I have an idea of where I'm gonna go and if I do end up going there, it's a place that I've been before, but I haven't tried working there yet. I've just met people for coffee there. I think it'll be okay. It is a little bit noisy, but as long as I'm doing something that doesn't take like an extreme amount of concentration or quiet, then I think it's gonna be nice because sometimes I like working around a little bit of ambient noise. Hello again, I'm back. So this is not exactly a faithful week in the life because it's been almost two weeks now since I recorded those last clips that you saw. Um, I have recorded some other stuff that I'm going to insert in just a moment, so it's not a complete time jump of two weeks, but there were several days there that I didn't really do anything that interesting. Last weekend, my husband and I did do a little outing for several hours around Montreal, and I filmed some cute stuff. So I'm going to insert those clips in just a moment. First though, I did promise that I was gonna answer some questions of you guys' in this video, so that's what I'm gonna do. These questions come from a couple of my past videos that I've uploaded to this channel um, about moving to Montreal from New York and also about just reflections on living abroad in general. I did respond with a written comment to, I think, all of these but I also thought it would be fun to actually respond with my voice in a video and I thought maybe these questions might be interesting to some other people who might not have seen the comments as well. So the first one is from Pierre who asks, how was your accent in French compared to the accents of Paris and Montreal? Um, to do this one justice, I feel like I should respond in French so then the French speakers who follow me can maybe make their own judgment about what they think. Uh, mais je pense que c'est plutôt évident que mon accent est plutôt parisien ou simplement français. Mes influences ne sont pas tout parisiens. Uh, je pense que les plupart sont parisiens, mais j'ai beaucoup d'influence également de d'autres parties de, de la France. Mais c'est pas du tout québécois. J'ai pas eu beaucoup de exposure um, aux français québécois, sauf sur YouTube. Je, je suis quelques youtubeuses et youtubeurs québécois et québécoises, mais j'ai appris le français en France. J'ai jamais pris des cours de français avant, aux états unis ou en France, n'importe où. Il y a évidemment l'accent anglophone que j'ai également. Je sais que c'est pas le pire accent anglophone ou le, le plus fort des accents, je sais ça. Il y a des trolls dans les commentaires toujours qui disent que c'est horrible, t'es trop américain et tout ça. C'est pas du tout vrai, je sais que j'ai pas un accent très typique américain, je sais que c'est pas si pur que ça. Et c'est pas pour insulter les, les américains qui apprennent le français, parce que c'est normal qu'on a des accents. Et il faut arrêter un peu de critiquer les gens qui essaient, mais qui n'arrivent encore. Euh, parce que ça prend du temps, ça prend du pratique. Euh, mais je sais que j'ai encore un accent anglophone, je sais que c'est pas du tout euh, disparu. Ça va jamais partir, parce que j'utilise pas le français dans mon quotidien. C'est vraiment quelque chose que j'entends tous les jours peut-être parce que je regarde des vidéos et je lis des trucs en français tous les jours. Mais c'est pas tous les jours que je l'utilise et je, que je parle en français. Mais après ça, après qu'on entend que je suis anglophone ou au moins on entend que je suis pas 
euh, francophone native, c'est pas ma langue maternelle. Ça, au moins, c'est évident, même si c'est pas anglais qu'on l'entend au début, je sais pas. Peut-être vous, vous pouvez me, me dire si vous entendez que je suis vraiment anglophone ou que je suis simplement pas francophone euh, de mon naissance. Mais après, c'est vraiment un accent de la France, je pense. Euh, c'est plutôt évident que c'est pas du tout québécois. Je sais pas, après quelques mois ou peut-être un an à Montréal, peut-être ça va... Je sais pas, ça va pas changer, je crois. Je crois que ça va être un peu comme quand j'étais en Angleterre pour un an. Même si l'anglais, c'est ma langue maternelle, donc c'est un peu différent peut-être, mais après un an à Bristol, j'ai pas du tout pris l'accent, mais j'ai pris des expressions, j'ai pris même un peu de ton euh, britannique, et j'ai commencé à utiliser des phrases ou des mots qui étaient très communs dans mes cercles. Donc je pense que c'est plutôt ça, si mon accent ou mon français change après quelques, quelques temps à Montréal, les expressions québécoises peut-être, un peu de ton peut-être québécois, un style de parler français qui n'est pas 100% de la France. Peut-être au final ça me donnerait un peu un accent mystère en français, qui serait fun, ou le fun comme on dit à Montréal. <rire> j'ai l'impression parfois que j'ai déjà ça avec mon accent anglais, c'est pas du tout ce que c'était il y a 11 ans avant que j'ai déménagé au Royaume-Uni, donc c'est peut-être le, le bout en français, c'est de prendre un accent qui confond tous les gens avec qui je parle. <rire> Back to English now for a question that was actually asked in French, but I'm going to answer it in English because I would like as much of this video to be accessible to non-French speakers as possible because I think a lot of people who follow me don't speak French fluently and also subtitles take forever to do. So <laughs> I'm just going to do one question in French. Maybe in the future I will do a whole video in French and I'll just be ready for all the time that it takes to subtitle it. Um, but for now, we're going to go back to English. The question is, si vous deviez choisir entre New York et Paris, quelle ville choisiriez-vous et pourquoi? Uh, if you had to choose between New York and Paris, which city would you choose and why? So I feel like I can't possibly answer this question fully balanced because I lived in Paris for five years. I lived in New York for about two and a half. So I've lived in Paris twice as long as New York. And when my husband and I left Paris, we were very much ready to leave Paris. It was a conscious choice that we made. And for New York, we would have happily stayed there longer. We just had an opportunity that came up in Montreal. Um, so we didn't actually choose to leave New York as much as we chose to come to Montreal. So it's not really fair um, because I was really sick of Paris, but I would definitely choose New York. I think overall, you know, both cities have amazing things to offer. Both cities have huge cons as well. But for what I'm looking for in a city, at least right now in this era of my life, and the types of hobbies, I think the interests that I have, I, there was just so much more for me in New York. I felt more at home there. I felt uh, like I could access the things that I wanted to access and had opportunities for events, for, you know, meeting people, people coming to town and visiting, just so much more in New York than I had in Paris. And Paris, you know, just lacked some things that I really do look for, at least right now, in a city. That being said, Paris was amazing, especially at first. My first one to two years in Paris, I absolutely loved it. It was a dream come true. It's just after that point, it started to kind of become where the cons outweighed the pros and then of course the pandemic happened and everything changed then but even pre-pandemic i was already looking for you know what's next what's going to be the next city where we move new york maybe i would have reached that point if i had stayed five years instead of two and a half but i hadn't reached that point when i left so i can definitely say that i felt more at home more just generally like i fit in in new york better than paris just for the style of how I like to dress, what I like to do, what, you know, interests me. I think now is a good moment to insert some of the clips that I got last weekend in Montreal. So my husband and I went to Westmount and then we decided to walk to the Parc du Montréal, which is the massive park in the middle of the Ile Montréal. And it was absolutely gorgeous. We walked a lot of inclining. It was a lot of physical exertion that I was not expecting to do that day, but we got to a viewpoint that was really gorgeous. And now I will stop talking about it and I will actually just show you.
going to answer one more question to wrap this video up because I think this is an especially interesting one because many, many people have asked me this question on YouTube as well as on Instagram and my DMs and comments. Um, it's a very popular one, but I'm going to answer this one from El Piloto from my moving video. Can you do a video in the future about the differences between Quebecois and Parisian accents and vocabulary that you've encountered? I still feel like there's a lot to discover. There's definitely a lot of stuff that I haven't encountered. I've watched videos talking about differences that I maybe haven't noticed or haven't encountered simply yet. Um, but there are a few things that I've taken notes of for you guys that I can talk about. The very first thing and the most obvious one to me is that there are a lot of circumstances where in France you would use the vous form, you would vous voyez, where here you use the two form, the informal. The most obvious and the one that I encounter a couple times per week is at the grocery store. Anytime you have a cashier or anyone helping you at the grocery store. I can't say that I've noticed every single time because sometimes I'm simply just interacting and not paying attention to how they're interacting and what they're saying. But times when I have actually noticed, they have used the two form, which is not at all, I think, a situation where you would use it in France. Um, with strangers in France, in my experience, you always use the vous form. There might be exceptions for like a much older person and a kid maybe you would use, like the older person could use the two form. But in my experience, being a 20-something Thing in France, I just always use the vous form. And as far as I ever noticed, everyone always used vous back to me. Uh, here, it seems like two is like the default. I know that there are definitely situations when vous is used. It's not like it's completely not used, but there are many, many circumstances where someone will tutoyer you when it might feel a little bit strange for a French person. For me, being an, an Anglophone, an English speaker, it's not necessarily weird, but I have noticed it a few times just because when I put my, my French hat on and I'm speaking French, I do default to more of a, a France way of speaking French. So sometimes I do notice. Another good one to note is the words for the meals. So this, I think, has changed over time in English. Like if we go back 200 years, it might be different in English, but typically, uh, at least in standard American English and from most English speakers that I know will use uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Some people in like the South of America, for example, will say supper. Keep that in, in your mind because that's important when I'm talking about the French ones. So in France, it would be typically petit déjeuner, déjeuner, and dîner. In Quebec, it is déjeuner, dîner, and souper. And I actually looked this up on word reference at one point and I saw that word reference is typically accurate and they said that in Belgium and Switzerland, it's also the same as in Quebec. So let me know if you are Belgian or Swiss um, or if you have a lot of knowledge about one of those countries. Let me know if that's your experience as well, if that's something that is maybe generational, uh, which ones you use for the different meals. But that is definitely something that I've had to wrap my head around because um, it can be a little confusing if someone asks you if you wanna have dîner, but they mean the midday meal and not the end of the day meal. You kind of need to know which one they're talking about. So keep that in mind if you're coming to Quebec from France or vice versa. Another thing that I've had to kind of get used to is that oftentimes measurements here are given in like feet and inches, for example. There's some imperial measurements that are still used and that's not exactly different French. It's just French that I never used when I was in France. I don't think anyone ever would measure something in pouce in France. So even though I know the translation for it, it's a little bit bizarre, I think, in my brain when I'm speaking French. I don't necessarily expect to use those measurements. Um, they're definitely still very natural to me. I've learned both, so both metric and imperial are, are quite normal to me. But it is just a little bit weird to speak French and use American English measurements. Um, those things just are kind of separated, I think, in my brain. Then there are some things that are a little bit less traditional in France that are more traditional in Quebec. For example, uh, the word for weekend in France. Even though fin de semaine does exist, obviously, in French, most people, I mean, if you use French out and about with anybody in France, you're gonna say weekend. I don't think I ever heard fin de semaine from anybody, any generation. But in Quebec, you use fin de semaine still. Those are just a few, just a little sampling of some of the ones that I have encountered so far. There are definitely others, and I'm sure there are a lot that I haven't yet encountered that I might um, over the coming weeks, months, year uh, in Montreal. So I might do an update to this at one point. I don't know if I wanna do a video wholly dedicated to it, might be a little bit like old style for me, I don't know. But let me know if you're interested. And also if you have any fun ones, leave them down in the comments below because I love this sort of thing. Finding out how we speak our languages in different places in the world is just really fun. Let's also keep in mind that these are differences. These are not right and wrong. There is no right way to speak French or wrong way to speak French or right way to speak English or wrong way to speak English. Uh, your accent and what phrases you use and what expressions you use is completely determined by where you grew up, what influences you've had most recently in your life, what kind of things you surround yourself with in terms of media, what you watch, what you absorb. That is how we have accents and, you know, 
use the language that we use. So let's please not be judgmental of each other in the comments. I think you guys are perfectly wonderful because I've never had that many problems except when I've had videos go like a little bit outside of my subscriber base and then the trolls will enter the comments. But <laughs> I'm sure you guys will be respectful, but just a little reminder, just in case people happen to stumble across this video who are not subscribers, that is how we talk about language in this house. So there is my <laughs> little mandate for you. <laughs> to wrap up this video, I have a few bonus clips that I have forgotten to put in the video. These were taken a month ago at the beginning of April, but you'll see that there's still snow because Montreal weather is insane. I realized that I hadn't put them in a vlog anywhere, so I thought I would just put them in as a little bonus at the end of this video. It was when my husband and I went to the Red Path Museum, which is on the campus of McGill University. So it's very central in Montreal. It was a lovely experience. The museum was very small, but it was packed with, you know, interesting things and it had a lot of dinosaur and gemstone things, which is enough for me. That's all you need, dinos and gems, and I'm happy. So I hope you enjoy and please be sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment down below, like I said. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon in another video. Okay.